Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. And tonight is the 24th of October. And the topic tonight is embodiment. So um, I just want to relay a message, like, like a story first, before I go into the um, like the what I have prepared for this evening is like when I started uh, thinking of embodiment um, this week is and then Wednesday I usually would have a, a meeting in the morning so I went out all that and um, I think I I did not put on as thick a coat as I should have so but you know it was the sun was out so I was you know really there are things that I needed to do. And so instead of taking care of my own body, I just went ahead and do the things that I needed to do. And by the time I finally got home, I was you know, cold. But, you know, I still have, my day is not done yet. So I still have you know, things that I need to march to, to I have to um, cook dinner. And then I want to go for yoga class. So I like, I didn't even think twice about it. So I just went to yoga class and it was a cold evening or cold because I, I've been uh, cold the whole day. So for me, it was like colder than normal, perhaps, because my body is actually di was giving me messages already. So, but I was not listening because you know, in my mind, it's like, hey, got to go to yoga. Uh, um, whatever it is, just put on a thick coat and go. And so by the time I got home anyways, it was after 10 o'clock and the yoga did not last that long. But after yoga, um, a friend of mine also offered to take me out for, for crepes, that we're gonna go for crepes together. It was like, uh, I'm not gonna say no to crepes. <laughs> I don't care how cold it is, I'm going. So I just went and did my life and all that. And by the time I got home, I was like, my body was in such a state that um, it was like on high alert. And I didn't really, um, I would say, I didn't, didn't really pay too much attention to it, but I know that, uh-oh, I've done something to my body. It's kind of, it's a little bit broken. Let me, uh, let me fix it up. So I try to really, you know, make sure that um, I have extra blanket, I have the heater on and, and my room is like really warm so that I can, I can kind of uh, limit the damage that I've done to my body. But um, so I woke up this morning, it was like, uh, didn't, was not doing too well. And, and then um, I was maybe up for about an hour or so until I was like, oh no, I don't think I can do this. And I was thinking over in my mind, okay, so what's my bottom line? It's, it's like all this thinking, 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 thinking. Well, I, this weekend, I have a seminar to go to, so I can't be sick. But, you know, uh, and then I have this podcast to do tonight, so I can't be sick. So I just have to, you know, tough it up and just go and, 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 and do the, the, the rest of my day and just, you know, make it through and tough it out for the rest of the, the week. And then the, um, my, my body just took over. It's like, no, you're not. You need to rest. I don't know who you think you are, but we need to recuperate because if you really want to go to the weekend seminar, then um, something's got to give. So my body was like really giving me this message. I was feeling dizzy, nauseous and all that. So ended up, I have to go back to bed for a couple, I just crashed into my bed again for about three, four hours. And when I woke up this time, I was doing a lot better. I was feeling like, oh, okay, maybe I don't need to miss tonight's podcast because my original plan was, well, I'm just going to sleep. And if I need to miss, then too bad. I just have to send out the message and let everyone know and, and, you know, and all of this happened just because I put out to the universe that I'm going to talk about embodiment <laughs> this evening. So my, my body was just 
telling, let's just give me some, some feedback about how I deal with my body. And so, of course, the irony did not, um, I did not lose that. Like, I know, okay, yes, there is a message here. I was not treating my body um, with the respect that I should have. So um, instead of really beating myself up, I just took the time to sit down and really meditate and feeling each and every part of my body that was aching was still trying to recuperate from the, um, you know, just trying to um, march and march and just do and do, think and think and not really listening to my body. So what I really got was as I lean into the pain, there was, um, it's like I was actually starting to transform the pain. And a lot of the pain, actually, um, there some pain, I was actually able to clear out some long-held, um, I would say, dead energy that I have not really looked at. And it needed my body needed me to be at the point where I'll do anything to fix you up and just I surrender. And, and then that's when my body can actually bring up some old things for me to look at and let go. So then this is actually all bringing back to embodiment. This is a story about my day and how I actually um, made it to this evening to give this talk about embodiment. So it was quite the journey. And I just actually want to start by saying that as a human being, we struggle with our body a lot. More specifically, I have a lot of issues and I have a lot of struggles with my body. And I am absolutely sure that I'm not alone because I've heard a lot of things about other people's struggle as well. And it's not something that just happened in the last couple of years. It's, it's like, thinking back, it's like all through my whole life, this, um, my relationship with my body has, is like front and center. A lot of times I don't really, I would say, listen to my body how a lot of the times I, I would say the better part of my life um i have body issues not that my body is malfunctioning or anything but i always think that oh, okay i am my body is like not tall enough not thin enough not like this part of my body is not perfect and 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 all of that and when i put clothes on how come i don't look like you know what the what I thought was the the, the perfection of a, uh, a female body to look like. So then all of these different thinking has been creating the struggle that I have with my body. And as I get older, I get you know more I would say um, more wise about like all these standards of beauty and and become more and more, um, I would say, comfortable with my body. Uh, or at the very least, I was um, okay with it. I, I, I settled, let's, let's put it that way, I settled. And then as I get more spiritual, um, even in the spiritual world, in the spiritual uh, spirituality, thinking is that the body is something that um, yeah, it is part of the experience as a tool um, and that you don't really have to do much about it. There really hasn't been a lot of thinking about the body at all. And that's, while I was on my spiritual journey, that has always, like, I would say that that's been a big part of how I view my body is that um, it's, it's something that we have to, as a spiritual being, we have to drag along. For, for lack of a better term, is that something we tolerate. Um, and so the, there's a lot of disconnection between body and spirit and, and all of that. 
And um, so I remember maybe about, um, let's say, six, six, seven months ago, I listened to a, a podcast about, uh, from someone that I really respected. His name is uh, Cohen Ray. He, he is um, an entrepreneur. And I, like, for me, he is absolutely not perfect, but he's like, but he, whatever he says, he say it with, um, like, he, he said it with, with experience behind it. He really lived it and really believed in it. So for me, what he says, I actually, I would take, even if I disagree with him, I would listen to him and be open to what he says. So he mentioned something that he, I think one of his, uh, it's, it's actually a very small clip um, video. He mentioned that it's about pain. It's uh, because he does bodybuilding and he actually has issues with his body as well. So he was telling about how he struggled with his body. And one of the things he mentioned is that feel the pain is most of the time for me is that when I, when I have pain in my body, it was like, ah, I have to tolerate this pain or what, what do I have to do in order to get rid of the pain? It's like pain is something it's, it's like, um, there's a big, uh, cross about it. Uh, like I would, I don't like pain. And so that's why I don't really have this healthy relationship with pain. And I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm the only one that has this view is that pain is something that I need to um, get away from or do something to get out of as soon or as fast as possible. However, his, uh, Kerwin's uh, point of view is that there is a message in pain. And when you actually take the time to feel the pain, not just try to dismiss it or uh, shorten that, that the pain as much as possible. Yes, you may want to do that as well. But before you do that, feel into the pain and so i've been experimenting with that and i've been ex that's what i've been experimenting is is whenever i have pain in my body um i would feel into it first and what i've actually started to discover is that when i feel into the pain whether it is like um, my tooth aching or my shoulder aching my back aching is when I feel into the pain, the I would say not a hundred percent of the time, but more often than not, the pain just start to transform and it actually just go away on its own. And that has been my um, experience with leaning into the pain, and so I actually start to do more about, and so and do more and more experimentation with pain and also with the body. And I started to have this very different view of our body and what um, um, pain means, because pain is one of the ways that our body communicates with us. It may be a slight pain, it may be an excruciating pain, but it's one of the ways, one of the few ways that our bodies um, communicate with us. And pain is really our body's way of getting our attention. It's like ding, 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 something needs to be looked at. Please look at it. So, and the more we listen to that, then the easier it is, or, um, the faster it is in my experience that the body does not need to use the pain to communicate anymore. Like when we get the message, then the pain does not need to be there anymore. It can just go. And that's, and the other thing that I um, want to talk about with the, the body is that the body is actually just like any other part of us, just like our consciousness, 
or I should say it's a it's a different representation of consciousness. Our body actually is the physical part of our consciousness that we can see. That's that's my theory, anyways. So and I'm actually exploring this idea that our soul, our the part of us that is um, coming from the source is like the flame, the soul that is the the life spark, the the wisdom, the knowledge, and all that. That's that's the the non physical part of us, and that's the it's. I would the analogy is that that part of us, the soul, the the the, the spiritual part of us. It's like the fire, the flame, and our body is really the the lantern, is the vessel that holds that light within us. And how we see the world, and how we um, interact with the world, and how we shape and create our world, it really depends on how much the flame within is interacting with our body so which is another way of saying that we have to work the flame within us has to work with the vessel itself and and also when the the vessel itself is how should i say it it's more uh, has more blemish or in it or has more distortion in it than the flame within us that the spiritual the the oh i should say the the spiritual the life energy within us will be um, distorted because of that embodiment and these two actually the the flame and the the body and the lantern that houses that has to work together and that's why embodiment is so important because a lot of people when they have pain when they have um, traumatic experience they start to um, leave their body or i should say the soul part will if it's too uh, if the trauma is too much then the soul part usually would leave the body it may not be like far away or just you know run away and never come back it may leave for a period of time and then come back and check and if the body is still okay then it may come back for a longer stay or some people if they really don't know how to um process the the traumatic experience or whatever experience that drift that drove the the soul out of the body in the first place then the soul would still be around or close to the body but it won't actually be in the body and it actually when and it this part of the the soul being apart from the body is is actually a lot of people are like that. And even the people that have the soul in the body, it's not there all the time. It, it's not designed to be there all the time because a lot of times like, like when we sleep, our soul would go and do other things. Or if we are not doing something that is interesting, like if we are doing something that's very mechanical and we are doing it all the time then the soul would just you know go and 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 has um and go and, and do other things and then check back every now and then so this part of embodying the soul is absolutely um critical when we get to the time frame that we are in now where we are shifting from living in a third dimension to um, progressing to living in the fifth dimension um, is that being able to embody our soul is actually a big part of it 
And the more you can embody your soul, then um, it actually it starts to activate your body. Um, the reason I, I'm just guessing that a lot of the times why we, our body, our soul and our body does not always work together and how come in the past the spiritual um, wisdom is that you shouldn't bother too much with the body. You just keep it clean and healthy and, and then that is all that. It's because um, for a good part of our life, or at least for my life anyways, is that the, the body has been so um, disconnected and dumbed down. Our DNA is, is very, um, it, it is actually, a, it's not the way that it, our body, our DNA was designed in the first place. However, now the energy is coming in to activate our DNA and to start to give us uh, give back more and more of our original um, design of what our body can do, what our DNA actually can do. That's why this concept of embodiment is more important now than ever. And it is actually, we are called, or at least I feel the call, to be able to start to work with the body and to completely be embodied in the body as much as possible or at, at the very least in our during our waking hours is to really create that um create that relationship with the body to really listen to what the body wants and i remember um in back in the end of July and, and in August, when we went to the retreat that Franco did way back at that time during the summer, he took us through an exercise to um, check in with what is the purpose of our soul, and what is what does our soul wants to accomplish in this time, in this lifetime, and also to check in with our entity and what does the entity want to accomplish? And I think he, he didn't have time for us to check in with our body, but he did mention for us to actually go and have that. And I, I did, after the uh, the retreat, I did have that. I did um, do the, ex the exercise to actually just meditate and, and talk to my body and really um, find out what the body wants what is the purpose of the body? And the answer I, I came back with at that time was, I just want to be loved. And that was the, the um, there was the message that my body gave me. And yeah, I, I kind of, um, I, I'm still working through that, is that that, is to really work with loving my body and not um, using my body as a tool, even though it is a tool, but it is a very important tool that really, um, I should say that it is as important in the fifth dimension. Um, the, the body is at least as important as our soul and our entity and all that. The reason why I say that is that our our body, or I should say that embodiment, is something that in the fifth dimension is still there. It's part of our journey. Um, and I think it's maybe the seventh dimension, or the um, I forgot. I think it's around the seventh or the the, the the ninth dimension. When we get up to there, that's when we don't need to be embodied when we can just um, be able to take on an embodiment when we need it to, but we are not, we don't really have an embodiment anymore. So then at, at least at the fifth dimension level, at least at this level of our the evolution of our soul, the body is there to teach us. It is a, 
it is as important as anything else. And when we get to the part where we can fully, when our body can fully embody the soul and our DNA is completely activated, then we'll be able to see how, um, how powerful the body can be in that there are some people that when you when they walk into the room they don't have to say anything they don't even have to think anything you can already feel their presence just by them being in the room with you so our body when we truly embody our our body when the soul and the body can work together seamlessly when there is no more um, distinction between the soul and the body. And that's when embodiment is full. That's when we can actually say to the body, okay, body, I needed to um, do something. Then the body will respond and be, let's say, I needed to lift up this car because somebody is questioning me. That's when we can actually be able to do that. And if we can say, when we have that um, kind of working relationship with our body, then we can fully comprehend how magnificent and how powerful the, our body actually is in exploring what our body actually can do is really part of our journey right now and that's why i want to to share my um, experimentation and my thought process with with all of you this evening is really about um, experimenting with Truly loving your body and not um, try to run away or try to take a painkiller to, to, to dull the pain is to really work with the body because our body has a lot of wisdom in it. And when we, are, when we start to unlock and when we start to work with the body the way it's it was designed to do from the very beginning um, and I'm seeing that it's the the design of the body 15,000 years ago because there was a dumb down process that happened about 10,000 years ago when all of uh, when all but you know two of our DNA strands that even the two of the DNA strands are very limited all, a lot of the access to the uh, DNA, the, the power of our DNA is actually not um, active for most people. So part of growing in our consciousness and growing and exploring the fifth dimension is really exploring what our body was meant to do what our dna was meant to do in the first place and i i can't um and i'm really full of excitement to discover more and more of it because our body can actually levitate and do and, and bilocate and do a whole lot more than what we can what we think of a body can do right now our body um, in the past, I would say 50 years, has been just a piece of meat or slightly more than just a piece of meat. But that tool, that dumbed down tool has now been, um, or it's ready to be upgraded and really fully explored in the next decade where our body alone, when when we can fully embody our, our soul in the body, then we can actually create so much more 
how much more we can create and what we can create, I, I don't know right now. I just know that we have only starting to scratch the surface of it. Not only can we start to heal ourselves, we can actually start to use our body to heal um, a lot more than that. When the soul and the body and the entity and everything start to work together the way it's supposed to be. And that um, is something that I'm really excited to start to explore more.